I came flying into a ruck, um, same time as Billy Vunapola. So he's basically like two, two rams butting heads. We literally hit the ruck at the exact same time, two heads, bang. So anyway, I did my HIA. Um, he said, no, no, I'm not happy with this. You're, you're done. Take your boots off, sit down. And then I guess about, you know, maybe five minutes later, the other doctor came running back in. He says, Jamie, Jamie, uh, Seb uh, Vahamina, my second row partner, he's no good. Can you come back on? Right. It's, uh, it's really interesting how, how things turn around, don't they? Because, you know, when you were at Claremont, you were coming towards the end of your career. Coaching, is that the way that you wanted to go for? Because I know you've got a co couple of other kind of business interests, but... You mentioned giving back. Is that was that always the plan? So you know, at, at 38, I was playing a game on a on a Friday night, and I still wasn't recovered till next Wednesday. And then two days later, you got to play again. So I thought, you know, this is this is silly. I'm not uh, giving the best account of myself. So for me, it was just a question of recovery. So that's really the reason I came to stop. Um, but you know, the game had evolved so much that you know I tried to be as clean as possible, and then still kind of impose myself in the game. Um, and to, you know, varying degrees of effect. I think we did quite well that year or, you know, I only got w one red card, but. <laughs> well, maybe we can maybe just carry on in that, in, in this kind of vein when we, we can talk about you know, the enforcer tag. So did you embrace that? Um, I, I didn't really think of it as that, you know, I knew, I knew it was there, uh, but it's never something that I concentrated on. Um, the biggest thing for me was always trying to, help my team go forward you know which is the basis of rugby so if i could help in my doing my job and then imposing myself on the opposition where whether it was a big hit whether it was a, a good clean out um you know or maybe a, a couple a couple uh punches in a, in a ruck to kind of dominate my opposite number um you know my, my mother always said it's better to give than to receive so i, I tried to do that as much as i could in my career um, and you, you talk about ice hockey, that's what I grew up with. You know, every, every kid in Canada grows up with ice hockey, watching ice hockey. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there is that kind of that fighting mentality. Um, but definitely within rugby, um, you, I've had to, I had to adapt. And now looking at the modern game, uh, it's less, um, you know, punch ups, you know, going after guys. It's now more big carries, big hits, big clean outs. You know, that's how you impose yourself these days. And, uh, and I think, honestly, for, for the longevity of the game, it's, it's, it's better for it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just talk about one of the altercations that you had. That it's got a famous one with Paul O'Connell. And this maybe comes on to the kind of tag that you maybe had in, in, in the kind of rugby world compared to someone like Paul O'Connell, who was a fairly clean player in terms of red and yellow cards, unlike ourselves. Yeah. Um, do you, do you, did you feel hard done by in that game where, you know, the famous Clement Munster matchup where it seemed as if there was a little bit of grabbing? It seemed like Paul O'Connell threw the first punch and you kind of finished it and there was a bit of rolling around. You get red card and he, he gets yellow card. Did you, did you feel hard done by with that? Um, well, yeah, honestly, I did. Um, because um, you know, I'll, I'll bring it back to hockey. Uh, at that point in the altercation, I saw the linesman put his, tag, his flag up. So I thought, okay, you know, he's going to call us both here for kind of a bit of push and all that. So I've, there's a famous saying in hockey is if you, if it's, you get five for fighting, well, you're both going to go. So that's basically what I did. I thought, you know, if I'm going to go, he's got to come with me. And drop I the gloves. Okay, drop the gloves. Yeah, drop the gloves. Both of us have a bit of a, bit of a tickle. And then, you know, yellow card, everything's pardoned. And then you continue on. And when, I think it was Craig White, I think, who pulled the, the red card out. And I said, hold on a second. We both pretty much did the same thing here. How do I get the red card? And then, of course, you know, it's, it's Pauly in Munster. Like, come on. Like, I, I understand. So, um, anyway, I felt hard done by it. But at the end of the day, like, I, I was just trying to, you know, we are just kind of trying to do the same thing. And, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I came out worse, worse for wear. So, when you look back as well, uh, Jamie, on your time in France, now it seems like a lot of it's been documented in the media in terms of your ending with Clement, and it'd be really good to talk about that because I think it's really important when we talk about concussion and we talk about that side of things. But when you look back on it, you know, how, did you, how do you look back on your time in France and the career that you had and the amount of years and memories you've had there? Well, I, I loved, 
I loved all the time uh, in France, you know, from the very beginning where I came up after the World Cup in, in 03 in Grenoble. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty tough, you know, the first six months because, you know, back then there wasn't that much support for, for um, you know, uh, guys from overseas. Uh, it was basically, you know, jump in the deep end and figure out the language, figure out the customs, figure out the, a new style of rugby. So, you know, it was the first, first you know, a few months was pretty difficult. And then kind of year after year after year, things got, uh, things got better and I got more comfortable. Uh, um, I really liked the way of life around, uh, around rugby, you know, especially in Grenoble where you know, I grew up in the West Coast near Whistler. So I'm skiing all the time. We even got busted uh, by the coach one time. <laughs> We're driving down the highway in our FCG uh, stickered car. We got skis on the top and, and I hear a honk next to us on the highway. I look over and it's Jack Delma, the coach at the time. And he's looking at us and he's just going like, what are you doing? It was myself and Julian Pericelli, who plays back row at Leon. We're just kind of trying to slide down underneath the, the side of the car. But, um, you know, that, those type of things were, were great outside of rugby. Um, let's talk about how it ended at Claremont then, because it's, it's, it's out there in the public domain. <laughs> um, you've been quite outspoken in terms of concussion. I don't know what the legalities are in terms of what you can and can't say, but I think it's really interesting, one, because you're the person that um, is talking about it and, and, and making big noises about actually the concussion side of things, especially in France, where, let's be honest, they've been left behind like they're doing a lot of, lot of things. And this isn't something uh, untowards them. It's a fact in terms of evolution and moving forward. I think it's quite interesting because the game I played against for Saracens against Clement, where I think you picked up a concussion and the kind of story went on for there. Can you kind of tell us that story kind of from that game of Saracens and then how it moved forward? Yeah, so, um, you know, you're exactly right. Uh, France have really struggled to kind of adapt with the new data around concussion. Um, and they're kind of the, the black sheep uh, in terms of world rugby uh, and how they're trying to uh, be progressive around the, the, the problem. Um, so you bring it back to 2015, uh, semi-final uh, Saracens against Clermont in Saint-Étienne. Um, in the game, I think it was about first, some midway through the first half, I came flying into a ruck, um, same time as Billy Vonopola. So he's basically like two, two rams butting heads. We literally hit the ruck at the exact same time, two heads, bang. Um, and so we're both kind of there on all fours, kind of, you know, like the cartoon bird and uh, – Bird and lights flying above our heads, and uh, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was not in a good space. I, I sat there, stayed low, and tried to just kind of recover, recover. Um, as I started to get back up, the physio was already there. I had uh, split my head open, so they took me off for blood. I got taken off the field. Uh, I got my uh, my head stitched up, and during that time, I had one doctor stitching me up. We had another doctor, an older doctor, who, who saw that I wasn't very good he said I'm going to put you through an HIA uh, I don't think you're in a in a good space so anyway I did my HIA um, he said no no I'm not happy with this you're, you're done take your boots off sit down and I was obviously upset no no I want to get back out there because you're you're not in you know the right mind to make the good decision um, anyway I I he just left he said no you sit down you put your boots off you're not coming back on the field so I kind of sit down I was kind of dejected I started undoing my boot and I kind of sit there and I was kind of, I was really upset. You know, I wanted to be back there out on the field. Um, and then I guess about, you know, maybe five minutes later, the other doctor came running back in. He says, Jamie, Jamie, uh, Seb, uh, Vahamina, my second row partner, he's no good. Can you come back on? And I'm like, Oh yes, yes, of course I can. Of course I can. So I, I do up my boot quickly and I, and I grab my mouth guard and off I go and, uh, and finish the game. Don't really remember much from the end of the game. Uh, one thing I do remember is after the game, we won. So great. We're in the final in, uh, in, in a fortnight. And I was very, very excited for that. But I just couldn't get excited that we had won. You know, normally, you know, there's a bit of euphoria. Everybody's having a couple beers in the change room. And this is amazing. This is great. But I was just, I was flat. I was dead. Really kind of cotton wool in my head. And, you know, typical, you know, post-concussion uh, symptoms. Um, so got on the bus. Just wanted to go home, just wanted to get away from everything. Um, not, not euphoric or really happy at all that we had won. Um, clearly suffering some from, the, from that knock. 
and uh, and then the, I got my HI2 after the game, and then the HI3 on the Monday with the doctor, with a neurologist in Claremont. Um, and they put me on a graduated return to play. The return to play, as you know now, in professional rugby is, is seven days, well, six days, really. And why is it six days? So that boys can play week in, week out. Whereas before it used to be 15 days, which to me sounds a bit more logical. Um, but anyway, they've, they've, they've changed that. So as the game wasn't for two weeks, they put me on a graduated return to play and said, okay, we're going to do 10 days. We're going to see how you are next Tuesday, Wednesday. I said, all right, let's do it. I wanted to get better. They wanted me to get better. It was kind of the perfect storm of them kind of racing to give me the green light, me racing to try to get the green light as well, because I wanted to be in the game as well. Um, and, you know, with the pressure that I put on myself, I think the pressure that maybe they probably felt um, wanting to get me involved. Uh, I got the green light on the Tuesday. We flew out. I had one training on the Wednesday and we flew out on the Thursday. Um, so that was, you know, the following, following week off to the, uh, the final Twickenham. And, uh, so that's the game against too long. First tackle I made of the game, uh, I tackled, uh, Xavier Choki and Chris Masoi coming through the same hole and I tackled them normally, you know, shoulder on low, perfect contact. And I felt, I finished on my ass. And I'm like, whoa, looking up at, this, up at the stars thinking, what the heck just happened here? How am I on the ass? Normally, I would dominate a contact like that. And clearly, you know, I was not recovered from the week before because a small impact like that, it's a classic second impact syndrome type situation. So anyway, I went off another HIA, passed this one, apparently, was allowed to go back on the field, kept playing. Everything was going pretty good quite a close game. Uh, get to the second half. I have a head knock with Juan Smith, their, their back rower. Uh, I get cut. I'm kind of on the ground, maybe three, four seconds, kind of not, not that well. Physio comes out, grabs me. He's like, Oh, Jamie, you got to come off. You're, you're bleeding off for blood, off for blood. So I do a blood sub. I come off, go into the change room. I start getting stitched up. And as I'm getting stitched up, I, I start feeling really nauseous. Um, I have to, I puke a couple times into the, uh, into the, the garbage can. Um, and then I get that, you know, you get that adrenaline rush after you puke and I'm like, okay, yeah, sweet. I'm ready to go. We can finish the game. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, stitch me up. We got to go. We got to go. And I've got, you know, Benson Stanley and, uh, Eve, our kit man stand there staring at us going, doc, are you really going to let him out? Like this is, and especially Benson being, a a guy who's suffered a lot of head injuries and, uh, and now, you know, works with Clermont as a defense coach. Um, he, uh, you know, the doctor's like, no, no, he's okay. He's okay. He's, I've, I've seen this a lot where guys, they, they can't deal with the pressure and they, and they get, they get sick, which I've never done in my whole life. Um, you know, sure. It's a pressure game, but I mean, it's the 60, 70th minute. I'm not, I'm not worrying about the pressure then that's more something you do before the game. So anyway, he let me back out and I finished the game. Don't remember anything. Um, and then that's, again, I finished the game. Obviously, we, we lost, so very, very dejected. But more so uh, than the dejection of losing, I'm in like this cotton world where I'm tired, super tired. Uh, I, I don't, I don't want to deal with anybody. I just want to go home and go to sleep problem is when I finally do get home that that late that night I didn't sleep for 10 days it's like I had bees in my head this was horrible my 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 family couldn't come near me my kids couldn't come near me I couldn't deal with light couldn't deal with anything um so it was, it was a really tough situation you know I was uh there was still the world cup that next uh that next September so you know I had things that I wanted to do but Really, that, that month after that game, I, I couldn't do anything. I tried to get back into training about three weeks later. Um, and, uh, you know, I just I couldn't run. Like, I, I got into training. I had a few little small collisions playing touch, and it just kicked it off again. So, um, you know, that's kind of – that's where that whole situation came from. Um, I didn't get much support in terms of, you know, from, from, the, from the club uh, – to, to me or the family, they kind of, they sent me to a bunch of uh, uh, neurologists, well, the same neurologists who had given me the green light earlier and then, you know, said, well, actually, 
we have perfectly diagnosed concussions. I said, well, are you sure you should have let me back on last time? And, you know, there was a lot more questions after the fact, um, probably a bit too late. But um, anyway, that's kind of where, uh, where things finished after that in 2015. The big thing is here is you're not in a state of mind to go back on because you're, you're concussed. So exactly. in France, because that's what we're talking about specifically here, and that's where they've been left a little bit in the dark ages, who is to blame in this scenario for the people watching this? Well, I think it's a, it's, it's a collection of things. You know, like you say, there's that, that pressure from the coach to get him back on. Uh, I think the messaging was wrong for the doctor to say, you know, yeah, yeah, he can go on because clearly they would have been in contact with the, the coaching staff saying, okay, we've got a problem at second row. Who can we put back on? Is Jamie still good? And, you know, the messaging was probably wrong there saying, oh, yeah, 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 okay, Jamie's good for him to come back and say, all right, Jamie, are you okay? Come on, let's go. Um, and then I think it comes down to education and attitude because if, you know, I've, I've had the similar situation coaching with Canada where I've seen players of mine be concussed or be injured in a certain way where you don't even think about it. You're like, all right, sweet. Unfortunately, he's out. Warm up the next guy. You know, you just, it's, if it's concussion, if it's head injury, he's, he's, he's done. Um, so, and that comes really from, you know, in my opinion, education. You know, if guys are educated around the dangers of that, well, they're not going to take the risk. But you're exactly right. Doctors, coaches, there's so much different pressures on those people in those high pressure situations. Well, a lot of times they'll, you know, they'll try to do the, what's best for the team as opposed to what's best for the athlete. I was digging in your brother, right? Daniel is six foot eight, yeah. so he's my height. But I saw some pictures on Instagram of him. He's clearly got the, the, the Cudmore genetics. Um, did he ever play a bit of rugby or not? Or was he just straight Hollywood? Yeah, no. Um, uh, both my brothers played. So my, my little brother Luke played uh, at ASM and the, the youth set up and, uh, and then London Irish as well. And, and Daniel, uh, the, the rock star, as he says, um, he, played, uh, he played Div 1 uh, American football in the States and then came back and played rugby. And uh, man, he, was, uh, he would have been one of, one of the best rugby players coming out of Canada because he was big, like you say, lightning fast and uh and could hit like a truck like when he came out of football he uh he was playing club rugby in vancouver um and he kind of he came back and so he's this guy six six about 260 at that time so what like 100 150 and 120 kilos and he's just lining people up and cutting them in half he's coming about you know 60 centimeters off the ground and just slicing guys in half running like fast, running people over and stuff. And everybody thought, geez, this is a kid we need to, uh, need to invest in. So they put him in uh, the Canadian Academy at that time. And I think he might've got a couple A caps. Um, and uh, he, was, he was on his way to, to being a superstar, but um, kind of at the same time he, he had come back from school. He was big into the drama, big into the, uh, you know, the commercials, acting and stuff. And, um, and that's kind of, where he made his decision, you know, as rugby players in Canada, when you kind of get to 23, 24, you know, real life catches up with you. And, uh, you know, if you've got an opportunity to go get a job, uh, a lot of guys will take that because, you know, you're not going to make any rugby, any money, sorry, playing rugby in Canada. So uh, he went off into the, uh, the acting world and uh, has been very successful uh, so far. Well, I'll tell you what, playing Colossus in X-Men or playing rugby, I know which route I would have, uh, would have chosen. But, mate, I really appreciate that. Um, and good luck for when everything starts back up and um, hopefully we'll get to see some rugby soon, eh? Excellent. Thanks very much, Jim. Have a good one. Cheers, buddy.